What's up, Chemical Guys family, and welcome back to another episode of Chemical Guys Detail Garage. Now it's time to get into spring cleaning. That's why I got a Kia Rio. It's not tropical, but it has everything you need to start from the start to finish. By that, I mean it has filth, grime, debris all over the paint. The car has not been taken care of. It just got imported from the East Coast. Now it's on the West Coast. So now it's time for us to do a full series on how to wash, clay, polish, ceramic coat, and the list goes on. Anyways guys, let's get right into this video with the wash. To start off with this detailing process, we will be providing a flow chart for you guys so you guys can be following this video along. It should be pop up here or here, depending where Christian wants to put it. But other than that, before you get into the claying, the polishing, the ceramic coating, there's one major step you need to do and that is washing. As simple and crucial as it sounds, this is a must do before you get into any type of detail. The reason being is this car was at the East Coast and the East Coast obviously does have salt. It does have heavier winters, but here in California it was actually raining. So we did have a lot of rain. We had many different types of grime. It was windy, but obviously the East Coast does have severe winters. But how are we going to wash this Kia Rio? It's fairly simple. If we actually look down here, I already have all my arsenal. To start off with, I do have two separate buckets, a clear one and a red one. The reason why I have two different buckets is for anyone that is new here, we do always recommend doing a two bucket method around your surface of your car. The reason being is you always want to have a clean water and a soapy water. Like this, you prevent uh, scratches and swirls because if you did not know, up to 90% of scratches and swirls actually come from imperfection on washing your ride. So obviously, we're gonna start off with the choice of soap that I chose today. Today, I'm going with Clean Slate. So Clean Slate is designed to remove any glazes, sealants, and wax away from the surface of the vehicle. The reason why I want to start fresh is because it's spring clean. The weather's nice, it's time to drive my car, and it's time to get that detailing on. So to start off with, how do you actually use it? You can use it in many different types of forms. In a Big Mouth Max Reese foam can, which is a foam cannon, a two bucket method, or even a foam blaster. In this occasion, I am using a ProFlow PM2000, which is a pressure washer, which is our pressure washer. So I will be pairing it up with the Big Mouth Max Reese foam can. All right, so now that I went over the soap, how do you actually enter it into your Big Mouth? It's fairly simple. All you need to do is remove the Big Mouth head, put it off to the side, and I already had pre-filled it up to the 30 meter mark on the back. It does have metering tips. And now all I need to do is grab my soap, and all I'm gonna do is just add one ounce. One, two. Let's give it two ounces because obviously I don't know what's on the surface of this car. I, I did see it does have a big bird dropping up top and has a thick layer of dirt, grime, and debris. So I want to be extra generous so when the suds actually sit on it, it's actually going to help me lubricate the surface. And whenever I glide my chenille washman across the surface, I won't be installing any more scratches and swirls. So once you're done, just grab your big mouth head, spin it back onto the top. And now for anybody that, that is new, you will always want to stir it and you don't want to shake it. If I was to shake this bottle, I'll start causing foam in here, and we want no foam in here, we want all the foam on this Rio. So I'll put the big mouth off to the side, and then we're gonna be getting our dirt traps. So our dirt traps are a must have in your chemical guys arsenal, and it's a must have to have whenever you're washing your ride. So this filter is going to filter while you wash, so all you need to do is grab your dirt trap, insert it at an angle, and push down. That's how fast and simple it is to use. This dirt trap has micro braces up top, so every single time I grab my Chanel washman and I scrub it at the top, it's going to release all the filth and grime from my washman, it's, and then these cone like are going to keep it trapped at the bottom. So like this, you always have clean water. Now you guys might ask me, do I need to have two dirt traps even though I have a clean water and dirt water? And the answer is yes. So just enter your dirt trap in your other bucket, and just like that, you have your two bucket method set up. So now it's up to you to set up how you want your soapy bucket and rinse bucket. Obviously it's not rocket science. One is going to be designated for your rinse bucket. The other one's going to be your soapy bucket. So obviously in your soapy bucket, you grab your choice of soap. You'll add one to two ounces of soap inside of there. Now that that's inside of there, we're going to get our Chanel washman. And right now I want to talk to you guys about our Chanel washman. So let's start, let's start off with this. First of all, it has a full chemical guys banding on it. As soon as you insert your hand, it's not going to fall off. It's the perfect size, and the Chanel washman is ultra mega soft. Especially on a car that is super dirty, you want the gentlest touch possible. So this is why I went with the OG Chanel washman. This is one of our very first washmits. We do offer many different types of washmits, but in this occasion, going with this washman is my choice. So now I'll just sink it at the bottom. 
I'll let it dwell in there. And how do you activate your suds? All you need to do is just grab your pressure washer wand. In this occasion, our ProFlow PM2000 actually comes with this amazing fitting where you can still attach your Torx Snubby to it. So by attaching your Torx Snubby to it, you're going to have a shorter wand, you're just gonna have more control over your detail, and nonetheless, the pressure washer tip unattaches and reattaches if you need so. So for anybody that is new, I remove the pressure washer tip, and obviously once it's time to foam up the surface of the car, all I need to do is grab this sleeve right here, I'll pull it back, and I'll attach my Big Mouth Max Reuse foam cannon. And once I'm done and I need to rinse it off, all I need to do is pull back on the sleeve, release it, reattach my pressure washer tip, and now I'm good to go. So now our next step, now that we set everything up, before I even activate the suds, it's fairly simple. You just want to activate your suds. All you need to do is just add pressure, and that's how you activate your suds. But if your suds do run out, just reactivate just by putting pressure. But before we get into foaming, all I'm going to do is just rinse down the surface of the vehicle just to knock off any loose scrambler debris, and then once I'm done rinsing it off, I'll grab my Big Mouth Max Reese foam cannon and my Torx Snubby and I'll start foaming up this Kia Rio and then you guys will see how thick these suds are that Clean State provides. All right guys, so I actually want you guys to come close and you guys can see that this car has no type of water beating whatsoever. I mean, the surface is wet, but it actually looks like it's dry. But in this occasion, this car is wet. The beating is not coming whatsoever. So I already know that this car has no type of protection. So even by hitting it with clean slate, it's just even going to remove anything else that it might have on the surface of this car. And we're going to transform this car because this car is newer but the protection, if the protection's not there over time, your car is going to start looking old. So this is why we're gonna do a full detail on this Kia Rio. Anyways guys, let's get into the foaming part. All right guys, so we just finished foaming up this Kia Rio and you guys can see how Clean Slate is actually grabbing hard onto the dirt and filth and grime. And that is something you want with Clean Slate. You want to let it sit on the surface of the car for anyway from 30 seconds to a minute, depending on the weather. If it's super hot, just start scrubbing it right away. But here in California, it's like 75 degrees and you guys can see how Clean Slate is grabbing onto the dirt and filth and I'm actually letting it sit on there. The reason being one washing with filtered water Two, where the car is not so hot, and three, I want to start over. So I'm actually allowing clean slate to sit on the surface, remove all the glazes, sealants, and waxes away from the surface of the vehicle because we're doing a full detail on this Kia Rio. Now, you guys can compare these suds with other soaps that we do provide. This soap is just going to provide minimal suds compared to something like Sticky Snowball. Sticky Snowball is going to be like shaving cream like suds, but this is what I want. I want something that's going to cause enough suds so I could have enough lubrication, but now it's just time to get into the fun part, which is scrubbing. So by one, by detailing your car, you're going to know exactly what protection you have on it. So why not start right now? So I'll reactivate the suds. And once I already re reactivate my suds, I'll grab my chenille wash mitt and I'll grab some suds. And these premium suds that Clean State provides are super slick, super, uh, super uh, lubricated. So whenever I glide my wash mitt across this Kia Rio, it's going to be nothing but perfection. So I'll go to from the windshield down and this car, like I told you guys, it actually got imported from the East Coast and the, the owner just took uh, took delivery a few months back, but she, did, she wasn't washing this car as often or at all because this car has no type of protection and the East Coast obviously gets severe winters as saw it has uh, snow. Who knows what this car has been through? But on the other hand, here at Chemical Guys, we're gonna get it right and we're gonna show you guys, the viewers at home, our amazing Chemical Guys family, how you could do this at your very own home as well. So after a couple scrubs, this wash bucket is going to my rinse bucket. I'll sink it at the bottom. 
I'll inspect my wash mitt, wring it out, make sure it's clean, get some more soap, and continue with this wash. Now, as you guys can see, every time I scrub the paint, I'm going in linear motions. The reason why I am going in linear motions is because it, all this filth and grime that is coming off of this wash mitt, all of that is just, can potentially scratch the surface of the vehicle. So how do you actually prevent that? And that is by going in linear motions. And two, once your car, one side is already dirty, flip your wash mitt over to a clean, sli a clean side and just start scrubbing it side to side. And by doing this whole entire process around the surface of your car, you are ensuring you are not scratching your surface of your car because you guys can see how much filth and grime is actually coming off of this car. So once I'm done, I'll come to my rinse bucket, scrub it at the bottom. And you guys can see how the dirt trap moves at the bottom. That's because I am scrubbing it. Ring it out, inspect my wash mitt, now it's clean. And I'll proceed with this wash around this Kia Rio. So, what happens if your suds do dry up on the surface of your car? I know we get that comment a lot. Just simply get your foam cannon, get your soap, refoam the area, and like that, the soap will not etch in, and like that, you get more lubrication and more cleaning power. And yes, we know here at Chemical Guys is sometimes your suds are going to dry up on you because the, the, the weather can't be on your side, it gets too hot. So just simply refoam the surface of the car like that, the soap will reactivate, and like that, you have more lubrication. So don't be afraid to use more product, especially because if you think about it, this car or your car at home is an investment. So why not protect your investment and give it the proper care, but just see how much filth and grime is coming off of this car. So guys, let me just finish scrubbing the surface of the car. You guys already saw, I go in linear motions throughout the whole entire car. And once I'm done scrubbing it, I'll show you guys how fast and easy it is to dry up a surface of a car that is not protected. Now, non-protected cars are fairly hard to dry because the water is going to drag, but I'm going to simplify that by using two products, a drying towel, and a drying aid. I'll be right back. All right guys, so before we get into the drying process, we achieved what we were looking for, and that is removing all glazes, sealants, waxes, or any type of protectant that this car might have. So, I still have my Torx nubby in my hand, and if I wet it, if I wet it, you guys can see that the water is dragging. That is, that is actually what we want. We want, we want no beads whatsoever. So now, how do you actually dry your surface of your car? And it's fairly simple. Many people on our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, as well as the YouTube comment sections, they ask us, how do I dry my car? How do I prevent water spots? And that is using Lucent Spray Shine. So Lucent Spray Shine is one of our newest products that just hit the chemical guys line. So how do you actually use it? Get your favorite Woolly Mammoth or favorite drying towel that we offer and pair it up with Lucent Spray Shine. So all you need to do is go to the area you are working on and then I will spray it onto the surface. Now what you could see that the water is doing it's, call, it's causing it to disperse from the surface. Next up, you'll grab your favorite um, microfiber towel. In this occasion, I am using the Blue Woolly Mammoth. I will put it and wipe in one motion. And just like that is how simple and easy it is to dry the surface of a car that has not protected. So we want this. You want beads all over your car so like this water does not stick. But in this occasion, we are looking for these, this type of results. So I, I am happy. So all I need to do now is just go all around the surface of this car, spray some loosened spray shine on it, get my woolly mammoth, dry the surface. And then after that, after I'm done drying the whole entire surface of the car, 
Then it's going to be our next step, which is going to be bringing it inside the garage and getting into the nooks and crannies, such as claying and polishing out all the imperfection on the surface of this car. So guys, anyways, if you guys want to pick up any of these products today, you can hop onto our website right now, chemicalguys.com, or you could also stop by your local detail garage today. I recommend you do so. We have over 100 detail garage locations across the globe, including Canada and the UK. As always, I'm Henry, and thank you for sharing Pastor Shine with Chemical Eyes. Now it's time for me to finish drying up this whole entire car, and make sure to stay tuned, because you're gonna see this car transform from how it is right now, to hydrophobic, reflective, and protective. So I hope you stay tuned throughout this whole entire series. What's up, Henry? Hey, I have something. I have a surprise for you. Come to the garage. All right, but but I'll be there. All right, I'll be there right now. Bye.